a while ago, I promised you, threatened you, depending on where you stand with this, with a series of videos about Don Winslow's bibliography. And I said this was going to happen over the next couple of weeks, and it's been like two months. You'll forgive me the delay, I hope, because I have been processing the information that I've since learned that Don Winslow is retiring from writing, his next novel, which is going to be the third and last Danny Ryan novel, will be his last published novel. He's moving on to other ventures, which means that this series that was going to be just a, you know, casual bibliography deep dive um, slash campaign to get Don Winslow to speak to me someday. Don, um, you know, this means it's your last chance to promote your book with me. I gotcha. This series has now turned into a victory lap, if you will, a celebration of Don Winslow's bibliography and we're gonna end it maybe in time for at this pace, to be honest, or uh, just before the release of his last book. Today, I am here to talk about the first theme bucket and that is going to be drug cartels. As part of this bucket, we have five books, uh, two different series, so it shouldn't be too long of a video. And what I'm aiming to do is to give you a bit of an overview first of what to expect, so what it's about and, you know, what the vibe is in general. I'll give you some kind of indication of what level of violence and explicit content to expect, because that's something that is always a danger with Don Winslow and if it's not something that you want to avoid to the extreme there might be some books that you want to avoid. Of course we have the Winslow Spice Scale and last but not least I'll give you some kind of idea of in my opinion how good of an entry point I think that every book is into Don Winslow's bibliography. So without further ado we'll start with Savages. So, Savages is actually a duology. We have Savages and Kings of Cool. I'll start with Savages first. So, I'm not sure if this was actually planned as a duology or if it was something that he decided after Savages was published, but when I read it, I was under the impression that it was a standalone and it can definitely be read as a standalone. This came out in 2010 and it was actually the first Winslow book that I read, so I thought it would be appropriate to begin this series and this breakdown with savages. Right, so what to expect of savages? We have three main characters. We have Ben, who is the son of two psychologists from Southern California. He's a hippie, he's a pac pacifist. I picture him with dreadlocks. I'm actually not sure if that's ever mentioned in the book or just something that happened in my mind, but that's the kind of vibe. And then we have his best friend, Chan, who is the complete polar opposite personality-wise. He's an ex-marine, ex-mercenary, who has a really fuck you attitude towards the entire world except Ben, pretty much. And then we have O, which is short for Ophelia, and she is in sort of a relationship with both Ben and Sean. They both know about it, it's very out in the open. Ben and Sean run a very successful business, and they're in the business of weed, and they have, they grow the best weed in California or in the US, if you will. I'm actually not sure how far they export, but life is great. They're doing well. They're rich. They're attractive. They're, you know, playing volleyball at the beach and having a lot of sex, basically. And then the South American drug cartels get involved and want a cut of their profit. So that's the basic premise. It gets pretty wild from there. Uh, I don't think it'll be shocking to you if I say that the violence and the explicit content in general is off the charts with this one. And it's also probably Winslow's most experimental novel. In my opinion, you get a lot of really short everything, really short paragraphs, short sentences, short chapters. To illustrate, this is a 300 page book that has like 290 chapters. So sometimes I'll put some pages up here while I speak actually just to illustrate visually what it looks like because it makes it really, really punchy and extremely quick to read, but I can also imagine that it could grade on you if that style doesn't work for you or if it doesn't sit well. He sometimes goes kind of into an almost um, movie script-like um, visual and dialogue for no apparent reason that he explains, but it just kind of lends itself to this 
really fast paced out of breath story and it kind of makes you feel out of breath as you're reading it. At least that's the intention that I see behind it. But yeah, I don't think it would necessarily work for everybody. There's a lot of explicit language. There's a lot of slang. There's, I think, some made up slang as well that I'm not sure that, you know, I found really fun and engaging and just very different from anything else that I had read. I also have to say, I read this when I was 16 years old, so it was the coolest thing in the world. And maybe if, you know, you've been more exposed to the genre, you've read more, um, it might be something that you're not into. Or if you're not into, you know, constant swearing, then definitely stay very far away from this book. That brings me to the Winslow Spice Scale. And I think you can guess, but this is a five Winslows on the Winslow Spice Scale. This book is the reason that the Winslow Spice Scale exists. It is absolutely setting the standard for what Five Winslows means. I don't think any book that he writes or anybody else writes could reach this level of Winslow Spice. I'm gonna stop saying Winslow Spice now, except for the prequel, which is The King's of cool. So this came out in 2012, two years after Savages, but it's a prequel to Savages and I think it's set about five-ish years before and we see how Ben, Chan and O become the friends that they are at the beginning of Savages and how their relationship gets to that point, how Ben and Chan begin their business. And then we also have another timeline of the 70s in California. I forgot to mention this is actually set in Laguna Beach in Southern California, which is a real place that I went to uh, specifically because of these books. <laughs> There's nothing there. It's, it's a beach, shockingly. There's really not much more to say about this one in terms of what to expect. It's a very similar writing style to Savages, pretty much the same in terms of the punchiness, the pacing. I mean, the pacing is absolutely relentless. The violence and the sexual content is off the charts and the Winslow Spice Scale is also a five. So for Savages and the Kings of Cool, how would this fare with a first time Winslow reader? I think it really depends. For me, obviously it really works. Uh, I read Savages as my first Don Winslow book and here we are uh, over a decade later and I'm talking about it on the internet. So clearly it was a great gateway for me. I read Savages and I immediately wanted more because I wanted more of that feeling of adrenaline while reading that I had never really experienced before. And I don't think I've experienced it in the same way, to be honest. Like a lot of crime that I have read looking for this, like there's a lot of types of crime. Obviously, you might read crime for different reasons. Go check out our organizing crime video. But when I've looked for crime books by other writers looking for what Don Winslow does, I have always ended up feeling somewhat disappointed. And Savages was my gateway into that. So in that way, I would say that if you read Savages first and you like it, then don't expect every Don Winslow book to be exactly like that, because I do think that these two are two of a kind, but it bodes really well for you liking Don Winslow's writing style. However, I tried to replicate this with Carlos and I gave him Savages to read at a time where he was in a reading slump, a very long reading slump. And I said, hey, this is super punchy, super fast paced. You like crime, you're gonna be into this. It'll cure your slump, you'll see. And it did not. <laughs> and that made me realize kind of what I've been saying earlier that this is, that was Bilbo, this is, pretty experimental and it is filled with like i mentioned slang and is written in a in a quite an unconventional way really that might work for you and might not work for you it also isn't winslow's tightest plotting i think he's incredible at writing extremely tight plots that go full circle which is one of my favorite things in literature really like full circle beginning to end and I think his plot is good in Savages and Kings of Cool, but I don't think it's his very best. So if you start with Savages and you're lukewarm on it or it grates on you and you're not sure, 
that does not mean that you wouldn't like other Don Winslow books. So in, in that way, I think it's an okay starting point if this sounds really appealing to you, but I wouldn't say it's the best representation of Don Winslow's entire bibliography. So I, as a recommendation, I'd say read the first couple of pages if you can. I put them up earlier so you can go back and look at what that looks like. Maybe read a couple and, and see would you want to read a full book that is written in that way and if that appeals to you by all means you can definitely start with savages i would start with savages over kings of cool you can start with kings of cool it's a prequel so chronologically it won't spoil anything but i do think that kings of cool works better when you've read savages because you'll get some reveals about like their past and their parents that are gonna hit harder and are just gonna be more interesting if you already know the characters and where their journey goes. They say that one should save the best for last and I am not going to do that. <laughs> Next up we're gonna talk about the cartel trilogy which consists of the power of the dog, the cartel and the border and Yes, I have them in different sizes, and yes, it does bother me, but this is Don Winslow's masterpiece. So I'll, I'm going to talk about this as a whole, but focusing primarily on The Power of the Dog, just because it's a trilogy and I don't want to get into any spoiler territory for the second and third book. But to give you an overview first, so The Power of the Dog was published in 2005, I was interrupted by Mr. Baggins. Hi. Where was I? The power of the dog. Oh, he heard dog and he had to show his face. This is a crime epic about the war on drugs. It spans about 30 years and we follow a wide cast of characters, but we have three main characters in this first book and they are Art Keller, who is a DEA agent stationed in Mexico in the 70s. He's young, he's starting out his career, he's eager, and he is kind of your stereotypical cop character who wants to get the bad guy and, you know, at some point has to make a decision between either getting the ga bad guy and sticking to his moral code, you know? Um, so it, nothing groundbreaking, but I do think he's a really good character and a really good hero to follow and to kind of latch on to, to take us through what is kind of the main thread of this story. Then we have Nora. Nora is a young escort. Her life gets intermingled with the mafia and then we have Billy Boy Callan who's from New York and he's in the Irish mob there and he's also a young guy at the beginning of the book I think he's like 18 or 19 or something like that and all of their lives get tangled into this big story and it we, we really are exploring the social political impact of the war on drugs, what the war on drugs is, where it came from, but also what effect it has and what cause and what kind of evil it truly creates by attempting to fight a different evil. I don't know how to truly do this book justice. I will be rereading this probably sooner rather than later. And when I say that, I mean, you know, not in the next couple of months, but I'd say in the next year, year and a half, because it's been a while since I've reread it and I want to do a proper in-depth review or analysis of it because I think it's it's truly a masterpiece. Don Winslow spent a couple of years living in Mexico and traveling to Mexico to research. And I think he actually said in an interview once uh, because somebody asked him if he considers his job to be a dangerous job. And he said that he doesn't find it particularly dangerous that journalists in Mexico, for example, have a dangerous job and because often, unfortunately, journalists have gotten murdered uh, for trying to report on the activities of the of the drug cartels. And he said that that's a much more dangerous job that, you know, he doesn't have a dangerous job. Sure, he's been shot at a couple of times. And I was like, 
what? <laughs> that is a dangerous job. Uh, but that is how committed he was to researching for this book and this entire trilogy. So it really feels like you're learning something while reading it. And I found it to be an incredibly rewarding experience. There's just on an entertainment level a huge amount of twists and turns and reveals and it really gets your heart pumping and you can't stop turning the page. You are glued to the book and I just love it. It's one of my favorite books of all time and a truly a masterpiece. I've said masterpiece like five times in the last five minutes. That is how much I mean it. In terms of the violence to expect again it's off the charts this is about some of the most violent people on the planet and he does not shy away from showing you what that looks like and also showing you what it takes to fight that because like i kind of mentioned earlier with the character of of art who is the quintessential good guy right he wants to take down the bad guys and he goes into it with kind of a naive black and white view of the world of these guys are good these guys are bad and that is very quickly challenged and it's it's not as easy as that and he has to make a choice if he is willing to get his hands dirty for the greater good and it gets to a point where you know the question just keeps popping up and at some point you have to ask yourself what is the greater good is the greater good worth it and that is that is the true moral question or one of them anyway of of this book and I think the violence really has a point in that sense because it is showing you just what it is that they're up against but it also challenges you in terms of who the villains are there are some people that are very clear villains and there are some that are maybe not so clear I should also mention that this is based on real events obviously I just said that Don Winslow did a ton of research for it, but it's based on the rise of El Chapo in Mexico. So if you want to look that up, it's, you know, some of the events are actually recognizable if, if you know roughly what happened, although it is a, a fictionalized account, so it, it's not historical fiction that way. And just to speak really briefly about the sequels, so The Cartel came out a good bit after, I think like 10 years after The Power of the Dog. And again, similar to Savages, I'm actually not sure if it was planned as a trilogy. I would lean towards no but this is just my assumption because the power of the dog ends in 2004 and it was published in 2005 and i think he just wrote the cartel because 10 years later the situation had evolved more things had happened and he had more things to say so the cartel starts kind of where the power of the dog leaves off in 2004 and the narrative takes us all the way up to 2014 and then the border starts a bit further back it goes into 2012 and it goes up to 2018. My favorite is The Power of the Dog. I think it's the one that has the best pacing, the best characters, the best twists and turns. It's the most polished one, the most cohesive one, and the one that on its own is a real masterpiece. But I think the entire trilogy deserves that title. The Border and the Cartel, or the Cartel and the Border, I should say, I found to be a tiny bit drier but there's a point to that because i think for me anyway my experience was reading the power of the dog being truly shocked by some of the events and the violence that was happening but also kind of morbidly fascinated and curious but that morbid curiosity fades and it gets to a point where the violence is just repetitive violence but that is very purposeful because i think th and again this is me projecting maybe a little bit but i feel like one of the things that he maybe is trying to say is you know we we live in a society in which we are exposed to fictional violence over and over and over again and it's not just fictional violence because you can find videos of pretty much anything on on the internet but fictional or not in movies you know in tv shows it, it gets violent very frequently it's almost more difficult to avoid it than to search for it and it's something that people are drawn to and interested in like that that curiosity of like how far will people go how fucked up can it get what can people do to each other 
And he's making a point in the sequels. And if you read the whole trilogy in one go, I think it would feel kind of exhausting because it does get to a point where it's just violent. It's not interesting anymore. I mean, the story is, but I mean the violence specifically. It's not new or novel. It's just violent and it's just painful and disgusting and uncomfortable. And I think that is what he was trying to achieve. So I don't think it's a negative, even though my reading experience was a more exciting one with The Power of the Dog. In terms of the Winslow spice scale, I was thinking a little bit about this one and there's there's certainly spice in it. Like there's some extremely long chapters and then sometimes you get a really short one thrown in there to really like throw you off and like make you stop and start and it's it's used to great effect and there's slang there's short sentences and then there's like long paragraphs and i think the pacing is absolutely fantastic so i'd say the spice scale is actually pretty high i wasn't entirely sure where to set it but if savages is a five i'd say that this trilogy sits very comfortably at a 3.5 winslows so how would this fare for a first time winslow reader i mean look i don't think you can start at any better place if anything i'd say it might be setting the bar too high because if you read the power of the dog and you love it and you expect everything that he writes to be on that level it just it's just impossible to be at that level consistently i mean look you might read a couple of his books and a different one might be your favorite but this is a level of epicness and research and almost journalistic academic information in an incredibly tightly told compelling story that is impossible to replicate. I think it's a lightning in a bottle, once in a lifetime achievement. It's a really rewarding reading experience. It's really saying things about our society and the world that we live in and how our political systems are set up and the nature of humanity and what we crave for and how the society that we live in pits people against each other and the choices that people have to make and there's no there are evil people in here there are absolutely fucked up evil people in this trilogy but there are also people that are not to to set out with psychopaths or sociopaths but they through a series of choices that they maybe feel like they have to make go down a path that is really fucked up. Needless to say, it's one of the most interesting, unique, rewarding reading experiences that I've ever had in my life. It's one of my favorite trilogies, series, books of all time, and I think it's a great entry point. You don't need any prior knowledge of anything. You don't need to know anything about the war on drugs. You don't need to know anything about El Chapo. You don't need to know anything about Don Winslow. You can just dive right in and if it sounds appealing to you, go ahead and do it. This was me talking about two series. I'm worried about the video where I have to talk about like six different books. It's going to be an hour and a half. But we have finally reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for sticking around. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. Do you agree with my assessments? Do you disagree? Are you interested in reading them? I want to talk about Don Winslow. Let me know your thoughts. If you liked the video, if you're interested in hearing more about Don Winslow's bibliography or any other books, we talk fantasy, we talk sci-fi, we talk general fiction, we talk historical fiction, we talk comics, consider subscribing to our channel and liking the video. It would mean a lot to us. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. drug cartels and adjacent things. <laughs> Look, you told me to be myself. <laughs> yeah. Drug cartels and adjacent things. <laughs> the, head, the head swing has really made it for me. <laughs>